our impulse response to the frequency domain was ingenious it was amazing now can we do this on other functions as well we had we had our impulse response which we could translate into the frequency domain can we do it for other things and yes of course we can we can do this for our input function as well and it, it is defined on the same specific way we have our input function multiply it with e to the power of minus i omega t dt and this is also called the Fourier transformation going from xt with a nice f for Fourier to x omega and we can also go back which is called the inverse Fourier transformation and it just has a normalization constant of 1 over 2 pi because we go from the from the frequency domain back to the time domain where we have x omega and this time we multiply with e to the power of i omega t and not minus d omega and this is called of course the inverse inverse Fourier transformation like that now this can also be done for y we have our capital y omega will be of course our integral from negative infinity to infinity of our output yt multiplied with e to the power negative i omega t dt and this all actually can only be done Fourier transformations are only allowed if the integral from our input over the whole length of t, all input uh, space, smaller than infinity. Because if it is bigger, this integral will always result in infinity, so we can we cannot actually change to the frequency domain. However, if it is possible, if it is a finite space, then we can transform it into the frequency domain. And this has a lot of properties with this because right now we can actually define our output with y omega is of course an x omega multiplied with h omega and if we have a cascade of systems remember that we had h of t was h of 1 t convoluted with h of 2 of t well, right now we can just say that the h of the whole system, h omega, is just h1 omega multiplied with h2 omega. And multiplication is way much easier than convolution, of course. And a lot of properties about how to calculate from the time domain to the frequency domain with Fourier transformations is... Uh, are all written down in the tables at the end of the syllabus in the appendix there are two tables they are also on the cheat sheet and I will give you an example exercise where we have x of t defined as sine of 6 pi t divided by 6 pi t multiplied with e to the power of i pi t this is our input we know our impulse response is e to the power 3 t let's write out 3 better 3 t multiplied with the negative step function and right now we can do this with convolution and going to the time domain in the output however we can also translate everything to the frequency domain and then get our output and before we change the output back to the time domain we can actually do some other fun stuff with that so here we have our input and we're going to rewrite this into the frequency domain 
And for this, before we can actually write this, we're going to use two rules that are that can be found in the syllabus. We're going to use rule e dot one dot four. So the first table, then the fourth row. We're going to use that the sine of an omega b t divided by pi t transformed to the frequency domain is equal to the step function of omega plus this omega b minus the step function of omega minus omega b this omega b we're also going to use in the second table the sixth row 2.6 where we have an input of the form xt multiplied with i e to the power i omega b times t transform Fourier transformed into x omega minus omega b so these two together we're going to use to rewrite our input we can see that this part actually is the first rule and this is the second rule and actually the 6 in the denominator here is just 1 over 6 multiplied with what I've circled with green that is actually I think the first rule in the second table but um, that was a little bit too redundant to write down so if we have this then we get the following 1 over 6 has been uh, written out like this so we get 1 over 6 you open up the bracket and we get the step function actually let's write it here more down here because I've been a little bit um, tilted over there we get 1 over 6 of our step function that was the first rule omega plus 6 pi but the second rule says something about when we have multiplied with e to the power i omega b t and this was a pi so we subtract pi from this minus u omega minus 6 pi minus pi because of second our second rule if we look at h omega we're also going to use one rule which is rule 1.2 and that rule states that if we have e to the power bt multiplied with a negative step function if we transform this with the Fourier transformation we obtain 1 over b minus i omega multiplied uh, no not multiplied just this um, only if b is bigger than 0 so now we know that we can actually calculate h omega and h omega is right now calculated as 1 over the b in our function is 3 so we get 3 minus i omega now oh, this is very good now we can calculate y omega because is it just these two things multiplied with each other so we get 1 over 3 minus i omega multiplied with 1 over 6 open the bracket of the step function of omega plus 5 pi because 6 pi minus pi is 5 pi minus the step function of omega minus 7 pi like that and we can rewrite this of course into the following of 18 minus 6 i omega i and these two step functions are interesting. B 
because we need to look at their boundaries because we have one step function subtracted from another step function the first step function this one we can go as low as minus 5 pi because if we fill in minus 5 pi then this step function will return 1 and then this step function still returns 0 however at what point does this step function return 1 when omega so here we had omega bigger than minus 5 this is true and for this one if we have an omega that is bigger than 7 pi then this function will return a 1 and when both return a 1 then actually they return a 0 so the output of our y omega is actually 1 over 18 minus 6 i omega if omega is between the values minus 5 pi and 7 pi and if not it is 0 otherwise we can calculate in the time domain what our function will be because then we just they have a normalizing constant is one that is one over two pi multiplied with the integral of minus infinity to infinity of our function that we obtained up there multiply with e to the power i omega t d omega however for now we're not going to do that because we can do some neat things with these frequencies because these things these functions that we just calculated are all in frequencies and that's what the next video will go about about the filters of these frequencies how we can actually choose what frequencies that we want to uh, let them pass or what frequencies we choose to remove